Hello everyone, welcome to Johnny's Nasdaq YouTube channel. In this video, I'm gonna introduce Kazan Workspace, a container-based streaming platform which can allow you to run all kinds of applications or operating systems from your browser. As you may know, Kazan has been in the market for quite a few years. It's similar like the one I introduced in previous video, Square X which you can launch your disposable browser or file viewer or email. But using the Kazan, you can launch much more applications, also operating systems like Windows, Linux, or Enterprise Desktop. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to install the latest Kazan version 1.15, which is just released a couple of days ago. And also, I'm going to give you a good use cases to use it to remote access your server, similar like what I introduced Guacamole before, but this one is much easier to use and much flexible and much powerful. Now let's start it. The best part of this Kazan workspace is the free. So you can install community version for free, which allows you to have five concurrent sessions for the home lab user like me, more than enough. The installation part is also the favorite part I like. Only four commands, then you can get this software installed on your Linux release. So which I'm gonna go through that since the 1.15 this version just came out a couple days ago. Now let's jump into the installation. As mentioned, the installation is pretty simple for command. But before we go to installation process, you still want to check the system requirements. You want to see what kind of operating system is going to be supported and the minimum hardware requirement. CPU 2 cores, 4 gigabyte memory, 50 gig storage as I said, the preferred. So I'm gonna using Azure for this installation demonstration and for this lab to show you the use case to replace Guacamole that software. Since the installation is straightforward, I'm gonna mute myself and record the whole installation process but I'm gonna play two times faster with music. Now Let's install it.
As mentioned, Kazen is container-based streaming platform. By default, Kazen already put Kazen Technologies registry inside, so which has more than 190 containers available for you to use. So basically, Kazen maintains those containers for their registry, and uh, you can use it just by one click to install it. So in previous operation, uh, we already installed the Brave and Doom. So then we can give it a try. Also, you can add your own Dockers, which can expand Kazan use to enterprise environment. Let's give it a try to see how good it is. I just installed the Brave and Doom. So we can launch Brave into new tab right away. You can use it. We can go to youtube.com and you can search NASAC YouTube channel, click on it. The voice, the sound also support it. Clipboard, printer, the direction. So all support well. If you don't like it, just close it and then you can delete it right away. Same thing on this Doom game. Once you click on it, you can hear the sound. The game logo comes out, and then you can play game right away. So lots of basic usage for the Chasm. Free version, you have five concurrent sessions for our home lab to use it, which usually won't exceed the limit. I'm going to show you some specific usage to connect into your servers. So here is my topology here. I have Chasm installed on this IP, as you can see from IP address. I also have SSH session and RDP sessions, two windows running on those two IPs. So I'm going to use Chasm to remote log into those servers. So I have my Ubuntu server and two Windows server with IP address as show here. So I can connect into them using my client. But now I'm going to use it from my browser, just like I did in Guacamole videos. You can put all your remote servers into your Chasm workspace. So let's start to do that. So I'm going to put the win one deployment zone is default. I don't have pool created. Let's max simultaneous session. I put the one. Uh, I don't want to install agent. So I just put the IP address. Connection type will be RDP since it's Windows. I'm using default RDP port. And here's the username password, which you should put in. So let's save. So that's the one you need to enable it, but let's add all frame in first. I go to the Win2, enable it. One, default. Save it. Enable Win1 as well. Then we're going to add the last one. This is SSH connection type, port 22. Put the password in, save. So we put three different type of servers in. You can put more. Three should be enough for us to do this lab. Once you create the servers, you want to make sure you add it into your workspaces. So let's add a workspace. I'm going to add a server. Friendly name, SSH1. Enable it. Make sure you select server, SSH1. Then save it. So you create the first server 
I'm gonna create a couple more. I mean one. So that could be one server. Enable it. Last one. Win two. Enable it. Select Win two server. Save. So now, if we go back to our workspace main interface, you should be able to see those servers has list on your browser, waiting for you to just click and then connect into it. So let's give it a try. SS one. It is asking where you want to open it. New tab, new window. Yeah, put new tab. Now it's creating a secure connection. Right away, you logged in. Just to confirm our IP. 20.98.232.1. You can do win one. Just one click, launch another session. It's creating a new secure connections to your remote RDP server. Connection lost, reconnecting. That's because I had uh, another session opened on my client. So now this client session is being locked out because it was connecting here. So since the same user connected in, this user has been forced logged out. So let's go back. Let's try Win2. Same process. Right away we logged in. IP address. So as you can see how smooth the connection is, I can quickly switch between three sessions without the issue, even faster than when I use in, in my remote connection client. You can close all those sessions, but you won't be able to lose anything because your sessions still running in the background. You can resume them, then you open it right away. The session will be continued. You also can minimize your sessions. So that's the all for this video, which showing you how to install Kazam latest version 1.15, this version, and also showed you how to use it as an alternative for guacamole, which you can use it to manage your remote session using the Kazan. Thank you for watching. Hope you like this video. If you like it, give me a thumb up and also subscribe my channel if you haven't. That will give me a great support. See you in my next video.